Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video we're once again doing a uh, another video in the Operator Series of videos for the Yaesu FT65 and FT4X. In the uh, last video that I did, I showed you how to uh, input a, uh, a simplex repeater channel into memory, and today we're going to be kind of doing the same thing, except this time we're going to be looking at how to do that with a repeater channel. So um, I'm going to take you through all of the steps to actually program the FT65 to talk to a repeater. And then in the end, if you elect to do so, you can uh, I'll show you how to store that into memory. Now, in terms of this information for the FT65 applying to the FT4X, um, you could, following these steps, figure out how to do that with the FT4X. However, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. These two radios are very, very different inside. While the FT4X does in fact look like the little brother of the FT65, uh, in actuality, when it comes to the programming menu, the display, um, many of the features inside of the radio, they are completely different animals. The main problem, while you can carry out many of the same steps with the FT4X that you can with the FT65, the problem is that the uh, the menu items that I'm going to mention <clears throat> and how that menu looks is going to be very different for the FT4X. So I will uh, end up doing a FT4X specific video later for those that are interested. And today instead we're going to focus just primarily on the FT65. Now a um, couple of things in order to keep this video kind of brief and to the point, I am going to assume on the part of the viewer that they have an understanding of how repeaters work, how to program a radio for a repeater, and terms such as frequency offset, um, direction, CTCSS, tones, PL tones, those kind of things. If you're unfamiliar with those, a lot of this isn't going to make a heck of a lot of sense, but in another version of this video that I did, it went about three times longer than I wanted, and I ended up explaining a lot of things that should probably be done in another video where you know, we talk about the basics of repeater operation. So I'm just going to take you through the steps to program in a repeater channel. And uh, if you have any technical questions, of course, you know, feel feel free to mention those in the comments section. Uh, if I can help you out or if another viewer can help you out, terrific. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Um, the FT65 is fairly easy to program a repeater frequency into. And in fact, the FT65 and the 4X possess a pretty cool feature called ARS, or Automatic Repeater Shift, that's going to help you and take out some of the guesswork in entering the data that you need in order to program in a repeater, and that's pretty cool. But before we uh, talk about programming into a repeater, um, I'm going to show you how to check and make sure that uh, that ARS is on. And basically all ARS does is when you program in in the VFO, if you punch in a frequency that's within the allocated range for 2 meter or 70 centimeter repeaters, it will automatically calculate the adjustment uh, or rather the, uh, the frequency offset and the direction of that offset. So that's, that's pretty cool so you don't have to type that in. All you have to do is start with the receive frequency and the ARS will do a lot of the work for you. So to check and make sure that that's on, Today, we're going to be using that F key a lot, and that's going to be the uh, second button down from the PTT, the bottom button. So we're going to get into the set menu by pressing, or rather long pressing and holding that F key. And from there, we're going to go to section 24 for repeater. And I'm hoping that this shows up adequately on here. So we uh, use the arrow key to go down to line 24, or item 24, repeater. From there, to enter in and, uh, and make changes on that, we just simply short press the F key. And here we have three selections to choose from. We're only going to concern ourselves with the top line, and that's ARS and whether or not ARS is on or off. Now, if you needed to navigate these selections, and, and this applies to the rest of the set menu, if you get into a section that has multiple lines, you just use the up down arrow key to select the line that you want to affect a change on. So in this case, we're going to go to ARS. If it's already on, you're done. But if for some reason it's off, to turn that on, you short press the F key. There we go. It'll start blinking. You use the up-down arrow to either turn it off or to turn it on. In this case, we want it on. 
So once you've verified that it is in fact on, short press to save that selection. And from there, you long press to exit that. And you press the PTT to get all the way out. You only have to do that one time, <clears throat> just, to, just to verify that it's on. You don't have to do that every time you do a repeater. So the actual meat and potatoes of how to program a repeater starts at this point. So step one, if you're operating from the memory mode, we're going to need to get into VFO if you're not already there. So I can easily tell that I'm in memory mode because I have an alphanumeric channel on display here. But sometimes you might have a channel that just has a frequency. But the way to tell if you're in memory mode is to look for that M and a channel number just above the M. Now to get out of that and get into VFO, you go down to the bottom left hand corner to VM and just short press that. And that takes you to the VFO where you can now enter in a frequency. And like a lot of radios, we're going to enter in the frequency and we're going to put in all the parameters for the repeater. And then and only then are we going to save it to a memory. So we're going to go through those steps now. Uh, what's showing currently, as you can see, is 146.420. That's a, um, a recognized simplex uh, VHF ham radio frequency. And this is about as simple as the display ever gets. We just have the frequency and the battery uh, status indicator in the upper right hand corner. But what we're going to do for today, I'm going to program in a simple uh, UHF frequency. So we're going to, at this point, punch in 440400. So that is going to be the receive frequency for the repeater that I want to program. And you'll notice a couple of changes just occurred. You have this TTN, and that's going to relate to uh, your CTCSS or PL tones. And then, of course, you'll notice right here we now have a plus sign showing. And what that's doing is that's indicating that this is applying a plus offset. Now, I'm going to go ahead and key down and see what happens. I already know we're not going to make contact with anything because there's a couple more steps that need to be done. But as a key down, I want you to pay particular attention to the 440 right there and see what it does. And as predicted, we didn't get anything back from that repeater, but you notice how it changed to 445? That's because that's applying that plus 5 megahertz offset that's typical to UHF. Uh, with VHF, it's usually going to be a plus or minus uh, 0.6 megahertz offset. Uh, but in this case, we see that the offset is working. If you keyed down and nothing changed, you might want to go back to that ARS system and see if uh, there is a change that needs to be affected there. But as I said, we still have a couple of things left to do on this. What we need to do is put in a CTCSS or PL tone, and then we need to tell the radio how to assign those tones. Just two steps left. So what we're going to do at this point is go into the menu again. So we're going to long press the F key. And from here, we're going to go to selection eight, and that's going to be the CTCSS tone or PL tone. I keep saying that, but I'm going to switch to PL tones in reference from this point forward, probably. So we go to uh, line eight, CTCSS, short press the F key. And again, we have a multi-line selection here. Now, in this case, we have our uh, transmit and receive CTCSS or PL tone uh, slots. Now, in most cases, 75, 80% of repeaters are just going to have a PL tone assigned to transmit, but uh, there are some repeaters that have a PL tone on transmit and receive, so you have a line for each of those. Now, in this case, the tone that I need to assign is 103.5. So I am going to, uh, I, as you see here, my arrow is aligned with the line that I want to affect a change on. So I press the F key. That selection begins to blink. I'm going to use the up down arrows. And I'm going to go down to 103.5. That is what I need right there. Now, if I needed to apply a receive CTCSS tone, I can just arrow down, short press, and then I can go through and select tones uh, in the same manner as before. But as I mentioned in this case, this is a repeater that just requires a PL tone on transmit. So that's looking good. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and exit out by long pressing the F key. Go back to the menu and from here we need to go down to selection number 29 and 29 is going to allow you to set your squelch so or squelch type rather so as you see we have line 29 squelch type and we're going to short press that and this is going to give us um, a few selections that are going to pertain directly to the the tones that we just put in now as i mentioned if you only have a tone on transmit the selection you're going to be going for is transmit tone. If you have, we arrow up, if you have 
a tone assigned to transmit and receive. It's going to be TSQL. Now these are, um, with both the ARS system and with how I'm dealing with these PL tones in terms of the squelch type, these are the most common setups that you're going to encounter. In fact, 99.999% of the time, this is the setup you're going to have. You're going to have a repeater that's going to have a standard offset, as I mentioned, of uh, with UHF, it's going to be uh, plus or minus 5 megahertz. With VHF, it's going to be plus or minus 0.6. I do understand that there are some setups that are different from that and, and deviate from that. I also understand that there's some different types of setups here beyond um, transmit tone and uh, TSQL, which is uh, best I can tell is tone squelch. I, it's really kind of a misnomer in how it's applied, but I understand what it means. There are other selections here that you can see. Uh, we've got uh, Rev, what is it? Looks like a Rev TN. I, I don't, yeah, I actually don't know what that means. Uh, we have DCS, that's a different kind of system that's for more advanced video. Uh, pager, and we have off, don't ever see that, and receive tone. I've never encountered a repeater that just uh, sends out a receive tone only and, and no transmit tone in. So as I mentioned in this selection, because we only selected, a PL tone on transmit, our selection for the squelch type is going to be T-tone. So again, to recap, T-tone or TSQL are the only two that you're going to deal with. Now for those weird applications where the ARS system doesn't work quite right and you need to assign weird and different tones and different splits and stuff, I will go into those on more advanced videos. But for the purpose of this video, as I said, in my case, it's been 100% of the time I've programmed repeaters either this way or with the uh, TSQL. I've never encountered any differences whatsoever anywhere else. Um, now, if we're talking something that is a non-ham related repeater we're trying to program, um, again, that's for a different video. So we've selected our squelch type. At this point, we're going to go ahead and exit out by pressing the F key. Now we're pretty much done. We put in the frequency. ARS set up our offset for us. We went in and selected the proper uh, CTCSS slash PL tone. We went in and selected the squelch type to apply to that tone. At this point, we should be done. So I'm going to hit the PTT and exit out. Now at this point, nothing really changed because that's the display we had earlier. But at this point, I should be able to key down and get some kind of response. So I'll go ahead and try that at this point. I will tell you the reception is not going to be great because of the LED lighting that I use to film this video. Uh, it kind of wreaks havoc on, uh, on RF, um, but let's see what we get. Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, testing. Okay, I got a return, got a squelch tail. Should get a little uh, station identifier here in just a second. There we go. And that's that, we know it's working. Now, if this was a situation where I was in an area just for a short period of time and was gonna work this repeater, I might just do that and leave it as is. But if I wanna commit this to memory, these are the next steps to actually turn this into a memory channel. So what we're gonna do is go down to the VM button at the bottom left-hand corner. We're gonna press and hold. That brings up this uh, situation here. Now, um, what you see, is the M and the number that's flashing is the next blank memory channel available. If that's okay with you, we'll proceed to the next step. But let's say you want to put this in a different slot. Let's say you want this to be in the channel 10 slot. We can just use the arrow key and we can just arrow up until we see the 10. There we go. Now we're going to name the channel at this point. So we're going to go to our keys here and we have our letters. Uh, we have a combination of letters and numbers, upper and lower case. So my first letter is going to be T, so I'm going to go to 8. So there's my T. To advance the cursor to the next spot, we just short press the F key. And I'm going to put a C in here. There's my C. Advance it one more. So uh, we're looking for an R here, and I'm going to deliberately make a mistake and then show you how to come back and correct that mistake. So. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to the Q and advance. Now, I wanted an R. I put in a Q. I go, oh, darn, I need to go back. All you need to do to get there is just keep pressing that F key and moving that cursor until it brings you all the way around to that Q again. And then I can go ahead and uh, press that one more time. And I'll, Well, I'm going to start all over again from the beginning there. There's the R that I wanted, and I'm going to go for a C. 
and advance. Now, for this character here, I want to put a dash in to separate the alpha from the number that I'm going to put in. To put in characters such as asterisks, plus signs, dashes, or, or minus symbols, um, we're going to use the VM key. Now, this is very important. Do not press and hold the VM key. We're going to do that in a minute, but when you press and hold the VM key, it's going to save that as a memory. So you want to short press. So we're just going to give this a tap. Okay, and there's my first character. I tap it again and again. And there's that, um, I don't know, minus symbol, I guess you could call it, that I wanted. Move on to the next spot, and I want to put a number two in here. Okay, we have the channel slot that we wanted. We have the name that we wanted. We have all of the repeater data in, and we verified that that repeater does, in fact, work. So at this point, we're going to save it into memory by long pressing the VM key. And you see the MIM in display. Now at this point, we're back to VFO. So if we want to see how this turned out in the memory, we're going to press the VM to go to memory operation. And now we see TCRC2. And just as a review, I'll show you the channels that I had put in in the last video. So we'll go up there and we'll test it one more time. Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, testing. And we get a return. And it pro I don't know if it's going to give station ID or not. I did it just a few minutes ago. Probably not. Um, but that is it in a nutshell. Uh, it took a lot longer to explain it than it takes to do it. Once you've done this a few times, you can really tear through this pretty quickly. And I challenge you guys to do that because knowing how the, F the front panel programming works is genuinely a critical thing. I have had this catch me uh, more than a few times where I've needed to affect a change on a radio in the field and was unable to do so because I simply couldn't remember. And I'm sitting there like a dummy um, trying to read the instruction manual for the radio in PDF form off of my iPhone while I walk through where, you know, had I had this committed to memory, I could have had it just done and been down the road. So whatever radio you pick is kind of your go-to rig, the one that you're going to use a lot, the one that you're, you think you're going to be most likely to need to do something to in the field, you need to learn it. So I kind of challenge you, even if you have your radio programmed in, if you have a day where you don't have a heck of a lot going on, you've got a rainy day where you're going to be sitting in your easy chair all day, um, do a reset on your radio. Start from fresh and go through the FPP and program that radio out and see how close you get to the original file that you have in Chirp or whatever CPS you use to program your radio. It's definitely a good skill to have. By no means do you have to know how to do this on all radios. You know, heaven forbid, I've got, uh, I don't know, last count, I think it's 41 radios. Um, I don't know how to do this on every one of the radios, but the ones I use a lot, I do. Um, and the FT-65 is definitely a radio I use on a regular basis, as well as the FT-4X. So I know how to make these things do what I need them to do in the field. So with that, I will bring it to a close. Um, again, I will encourage you, if you have any questions, uh, go down there and use that comment section. Um, comment sections can be... Uh, can actually be a wealth of information. You get a lot of people there that really know what they're talking about. You know, you get some propeller heads and wing nuts every now and again that breeze in and drop some weirdness and then bounce out. But that's a rare occasion. I, I don't really dwell on that all that much. Um, I, I'm more excited about the people that actually genuinely do get in there and ask relevant, pertinent questions or make points that are that are valuable both to myself and everyone else. So uh, use that comment section for whatever uh, whatever you can get out of it. So with that, I'll bring it to a close. Thank you for watching and or listening. Have a wonderful day. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Southwest Visalia, California. Take it easy.